scriptures talk is going to make about you a blessedness whatever state that happens that to a man you to attain. whose delight you. is in the law of God. So as someone said, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Do not be like Esther when her man was plotting the death of the Jews. Word went to Esther and she was careless. And Mordecai said, do not think that because we are outside of the gates, when they are done with us, paraphrasing, they will come back to you. In one minute, I'd like you to stand as a priest that you are and decree and declare, this tripartite spirit we banish first from our spiritual atmosphere and then out of Kaduna State and this nation. Number one, the spirit of death. Please pray. Number one, the spirit of death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Cause the spirit of death. Number two, take authority over strange infirmities infirmities with no medical history demonic oppressions over people number three take authority over the wicked spirit of kidnapping and all kinds of activities of terrorists In the name of Jesus, we command, we decree, and we declare. We stand as watchmen and we declare our territory is sanitized from these operations, from these afflictions in the name of Jesus. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Hallelujah. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. We banish the operation of death first from this family. Second from this city third from this state and fourth from this nation you are a spirit you are not an occurrence we call you by your name and we banish your operation in the name of Jesus Christ number two strange afflictions in the name Chabakatos Kebrakata Shkelebarakatos Ebregeteka Parousia in the name that is above all names any planting in your body that is not of the Christ I curse it now by the God of heaven number three we pray 
this one is not us we speak to the elements of the earth we speak to the elements of the supernatural we command the earth and every element of the supernatural that any man see listen let me teach you something you see the earth is a universal point of contact everyone touches the earth the terrorist who wants to kill another person now is on earth his feet is touching the earth and you can use the earth and speak in the name of jesus we speak by the power of the holy spirit let the activity of kidnappers and terrorists within this region and around stop now stop now the bible says that he frustrates the tokens of liars he makes diviners mad so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and if there is anyone whether your loved ones or whoever that is under the siege of kidnappers we declare their unconditional release in the name of jesus christ these are some of the ways is more than terrorism it's also how the spirit of poverty works when you carry five or ten million and give to rescue someone what if that's your life savings very demonic operations Zaria we speak to you this is our domain in the name of Jesus we draw a line across these spiritual borders and we declare it sanctified in the name of Jesus we decree and declare that any activity that is not the Christ sponsored by the spirit we banish its continuity In the name of Jesus, please be seated. God bless you. You see, please understand this. The believer is not a cause to creation. The believer is not, is not, is not a nuisance to civilization. The believer is not a luggage that our sociology is trying to manage. No, the ideology that we have been given is an ideology that transforms. It does not destroy. Are we together? So it's important that, that we continue to emphasize, believers, please, more than knowing who we are, we must obtain grace from God to be the light and to be salt. Not to sit down and hope things change, not to sit down and be careless and say it does not concern me you see god has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that we are we are we are members of his body what happens to one happens to all it's an ideology that we must carry it's an ideology we must sustain hallelujah praise the lord thank you thank you for allowing me to do that very quickly we'll get to the business of the night the keys of the kingdom we're on a revision series for some of you who are just coming so many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight let's get to the word of god the keys of the kingdom this is part two we're on a revision series um the way that god trains us in this place is very intentional it's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of God there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what God seeks that we become praise the Lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context that are balanced life applicable and are transforming again and um, every once in a while before we get into another level God would grant us grace to do um, somewhat of a revision that means to go back 
and look at the things that we have learned by the spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works and if our christian lives um if it continues to be unfruitful we will be frustrated the bible says herein is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 that ye bear much fruit not just fruit much fruit it says so shall ye be my disciples this will be proof that i mentored you your results will show that i mentored you are we together matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 we started off last week jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom and i started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom one key to the kingdom and that key is not an object is the person christ christ being the door the authorized entrance point we observed last week that um there are not only doors there are also windows there are other illegitimate routes into a house but the authorized channel to any house is called a door if a visitor jumps through your window he's not welcome although he's in your house are we together so jesus said i am the door jesus never said i am the window i am the door there is only one key to the kingdom the christ the door but when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth then the kingdom functions by keys a key is a symbol for access access so the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the Christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um, the keys of the kingdom are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of God to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the Bible says above his name I say this because many times believers think that God is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings, trado African approaches and we believe that it will, it will draw sympathy and because God is love, he will respond. But then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of God and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't 
learn and know the word of God just as an option. If you want to be spiritual, then take the word seriously. If you don't want to be spiritual, you can roam around the things of God. No, there is no victory outside of the word. The word of God is the testament, is God's commitment, is his vow. The word of God is a definition of how far the terms and conditions. It's important that we know the word. There's no place in scripture where the Bible records that Satan comes to steal prayer. No, he can stop prayer, but he cannot steal prayer. But if that seed is sown, the parable of the sower, the seed is the word of God. And Satan cometh immediately, not a demon. He comes himself and he steals the word. Are we together? Very, very important. So we have to pay attention to the word. Right, we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week. How that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth. What next? What is the next assignment? Listen, there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following Christ. Now take note of my choice of words, the religion. That means that there is no life and no power. There is no intent and no goal. Why do I have to serve God? Are we together? So when believers get born again, there's no motivation for spiritual growth. There is no motivation for increase. At best, their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor, meaning to go into ministry. And this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved now it looks very simple but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about god and it matters what you are told it matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you you can hate god because he was wrongly proposed you can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of christ in a lopsided way and i told us again and i've shared it here in this house that how we grow matters not just that we grow now think with me for instance that this gentleman just got born again and the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity as powerful as it is this guy is already in trouble you see there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense you see that now if this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh conformity to the image of the Christ you know how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life that life of surrender the prosperity is going to destroy this man he will have the money because the principles work but it will be at the expense of his soul but the bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you 
into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit isaiah 29 and verse 11 it's a popular scripture here please give it to us isaiah 29 and verse 11 read with me is projected please one two read and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot for it is what notice it didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of god are not the ways of man the methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting and until you become spiritual by your submitting to the holy spirit you will not be effective in your spirit work that was why naman refused to wash he was angry he was embarrassed what kind of nonsense is this you brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat he's been cleansed so the, the ways of god are a mystery you have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it that whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one very very powerful the ways of god in god's economy there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty are you seeing that now yes 
so it takes being spiritual to really really become a kingdom person now i began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom we'll continue from there bless god number one we looked at two last week number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing god god only god first god above all and we explored the first three words of genesis or first four words of genesis 1 verse 1 i'm just doing a quick recap the bible says in genesis 1 verse 1 the first four words in the beginning god the beginning of everything must be god you do not ask god to come and patch your life you don't create your agenda create your plans and ask god to endorse it uh -uh. he's alpha omega not chronos omega god will not join you on the way he has to start are we together the bible does not call him chronos you don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions he's alpha and omega and so we challenged ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way but i acknowledge the fact that when god becomes above everything he protects he preserves two we spoke about the concept of success tying it with the law of the mind is very important that transformation is important in this kingdom in this kingdom we reign by light we reign by knowledge and that knowledge comes through transformation transformation through renewal and enlightenment take notes transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of christ not everything in your mind is dangerous not everything in your mind is wrong but when you come to christ the holy spirit adam before his fall did not need renewal there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from god satan began to sow a seed of an information when jesus came the bible says um, god now came walking in the cool of the day adam where art thou he said i heard thy voice but i hid because i was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes i hope you know that it is not only god that is the sower of the word it is not only satan two souls remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears while men slept an enemy whoever that enemy is we know he's a farmer too because he sows so you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with you can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing this is why transformation is powerful You look at a little child a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for god's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man i mean what he would do someone depriving you of your rights and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the bible says in romans chapter 12 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is 
do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern, the system of operation that comes with this cosmos. It says, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. And that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, to permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a mindset, there was a thinking, there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth. And he's saying, allow. The word let there means allow. Allow this body of beliefs, allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding. Very important. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Then it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind. When your understanding is darkened, you are alienated from the potential, the experience of the life of God. It says, through the ignorance that is in them. Transformation is very important. There is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation. And it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria we are people who are very spiritual. We would, we would opt for wise sayings. We would opt for a mix of trado, African Christian approaches and would not settle down for the word of God that is balanced, truthful, intelligent and transforming. And this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of Christians that we have. And all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of God. And it's not entirely so. Because there is a species of man that God cannot produce. So when you see that kind of man, you know that there was a corruption somewhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The mind is very powerful. I taught us about success that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do true success is what you attract by who you become this is very powerful there are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially spiritually they want to do things and there is a place of doing there is a place of action but action is only relevant when there is transformation success is what you attract by who you become there is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain it's impossible are we together you cannot see papa Ia deboe for instance at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish his transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you would think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make. We try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are. So the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels, our mindsets. Success is a product of growth. It's more than doing things. God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change, to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change. Everything continues to change to reflect the changing person. You don't go and look for friends. You attract them by your growth. Are we together? You don't go around hand picking people. This is, the, this is the labor that God saved us from through transformation. Look how painful it is to go and select friends. How do you know the person will not change tomorrow? 
allow the wisdom of God to select them. Your assignment is to grow. Does not deep call on to deep. When you grow, it begins to change. You cannot be wealthy and have poor friends. It's not about driving them. The law edits itself. It edits your possibilities. The moment there is that transition, your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave. You don't have to say, I'm, I'm tired of this place. No, that's not wise. Grow. There is a level to which you grow. Your one room will push you out and the laws of God will back your exit. They remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it. While they started believing in Exodus, there was, there was, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check, where is darkness? What gives me license? What gives me access? If your prayer life is on fire, he can't attack your prayer life. He will check your understanding of the word of God. They are called rulers of darkness. Their domain is when there is ignorance. Are we together? The law of the mind. When I learned this law, it changed my life. I knew that there had to be an easy way. It's difficult to give God glory the way many people seek success. Your assignment is to grow. When you grow from the intelligence of that growth, you will be guided on what to do circumspectly. The Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and he says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus halus kapratuskia the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law. The Bible declares again and again in this kingdom, I'm doing a revision, that the just, the believer, one who has been justified in Christ, that you will live by faith. 
the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about god and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out it's as simple as that but i know whom i have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. He has an ability and I know him. I'm persuaded. Are we together? Very important. Come, Sheun. Look at this, please. Now, if I look at Sheun now and I say, Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira. The first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am my ability my integrity everything comes under pressure at the instance of that word he would have to verify whether number one i have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira and then number two whether i have the ability i may have the willingness the integrity but not have the ability so god allowed his word so we can vet him he's not afraid of being vetted God is saying, probe me, probe my integrity. I've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations. So that your conclusion on reading this is that God is not a man that he should lie. Are we together now? It's not something you just believe. He tells you, go through it. I allow you to have this, the chronicles of my integrity, so that you will believe me. When I say I can lift a man from a dunghill, and sit him with princes vet it did i not raise joseph did i not raise esther ah it's powerful to believe god there are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system um there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you thirty thousand. you will never rise you will never move listen if it is god he will prove himself faith powerful find a believer that has faith and understands faith now faith is not just blindly believing faith is conviction are we together and that conviction comes through understanding you have really understood god and his ways when you know where how you contribute in terms of your partnership your participation listen bible faith does not leave everything to God. There is always man's role in that equation. Please understand this. Bible faith will never allow God to just do everything. There is always the participation. And your participation is your believing God and then subscribing to the terms, the conditions that guarantee for that outcome. This is where many believers continue to miss it. Faith is more than just confession. Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God now watch this that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. 
Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, 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 not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you're understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say you may look like a mountain but faith deflates mountains it is true it is true time will fail me he says to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions listen let me tell you the truth there is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun it takes faith to subdue say in the name of Jesus by the faith of God at work in me I subdue every mountain don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely no 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 there is nothing special about challenges it is defeat that should be a surprise don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it and let the god of heaven who is not a man that should lie come and prove himself in your life every testimony here is faith the equation of faith completed trust in god please don't doubt god i know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on god we make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two one plus one plus god is any answer he says it should be any answer by what standard will you say he failed if a house is my own i can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance it's my house so you don't say because i entered here yes this is my house you are a visitor anywhere i show you that the door is you follow there kite this is god hmm. god can decide to say 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together this is god for you 10 years in one hallelujah the law of faith let's run faith is very important we have dealt with the law of faith here we have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective christian life the law of value Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him 
and bring him before great men this is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie sincerely let me tell you this is one of the I, I, I can't use the word truest scriptures but this scripture you see please have a lot of regard for it the gift of a man truly can make room for him he didn't say we'll show him where his room is until then there is no space for you the gift will make room for you like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space and because of your honor for that visitor the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room so where there was no space for you that your gift can come and say what is going on here the table of greatness where is my space sorry there's no space no it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne the gift of a man the gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness it's very important classic um story is the story of joseph genesis chapter 41 when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46 i don't want to go into it forgive me i'm rushing because we're just this is a revision series i'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom these are the truths we engage if you don't engage this you will fail i tell you sincerely they are not opinions they are not doctrinal perspectives when jesus came he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom it's it's important that we understand the methodologies of god it's not the discourse it's not an invention of one man please understand this J jeremiah 6 i believe verse 16 let's go there and then we'll return here jeremiah 6 16 the bible says to ask for the ancient path it says stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path wherein is the good way he says when you find it walk therein and ye shall find what rest another word for rest is sabbath the sabbath of a man comes the bible says labor to enter your rest that labor is not a labor in the flesh it's a labor of understanding 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 that there is a belief system there is a construction when you hold the keys of the kingdom they can bring you in experience to your sabbath so two people all saved by god can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results and the difference is not the love of god for them for the same lord is rich unto all the difference is their understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so your destiny is not just left to god how can i lie sharia whatever will be will be those wise sayings are poisonous Are we together the law of value very very powerful you will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings your value decide who decides who pursues you it is true and who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward God designed life to operate based on a reward system there's no sentiments to it life operates based on a reward system that means that no matter how bad my background is no matter how bad it was there is a bailout system i can be valuable i can find my way out of every nonsense in life it has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you it's a principle backed up by god's own integrity when you discover and you develop problem solving abilities when you become fruitful when you become productive it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world 
does not have too many people who are valuable. Please understand this. Potentially, we all are. But in experience, there are few people per territory. You can, you can do a random sampling. There are few people per territory who are really valuable. So it's impossible to be ignored. It's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you there is more there is more than a weak and a mediocre life there is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life. There is more than that. There is a life of meaning and glory and beauty. He has called us into glory and virtue. He has called many sons into glory. Where your life becomes an influence for his majesty. Your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. He says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. He says, you are the light of the world. Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder one wonder connecting to another when people think they have exhausted a dimension here you come like the eagle another page god does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity no it's a very poisonous proposition he desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so must you. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Hmm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. 
Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a Northerner gives you. Being a Middle Belt, a, South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It says, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God. When God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was a light bearer and a fulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Appa! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will flow to it they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you. Shake that off and know that there is a way. 
Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of value. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you, but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power. There are mysteries in the kingdom. These are the keys. Please understand this. Please understand this. The next key that I want to teach us is what I call, you know it, the mystery of exemption. Huh. That there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves. The first time we see exemption in scripture officially was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel. Are we together? And that when the angel of death saw the blood, he would pass over. That is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you. Passing over is a possibility in this kingdom. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. He said none shall come nigh thy dwelling, but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked. Let me tell you, the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you. Forget about your current results. Just focus on believing it. Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied 
But a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, what do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother who said the head of John the Baptist. And the head of John the Baptist went. There are things that should not happen that you can make happen. And there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening. Praise. When you praise God, it's called perfected praise. Praise that is intentional. Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horses and his rider, not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. Are we together? Yes. Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice sacrifice is very powerful psalms 50 and verse 5 i'm just doing a quick recap we have all these teachings you can go and listen to them gather unto me my saints the bible declares they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice there are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered sacrifice the Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings. And that night, not the next day, that same night, the Lord came to him and said, Solomon, ask what he will. And then he asked, not for the life of his enemy, but for wisdom to govern the people. And he said, you did not ask for the life of your enemy, nor riches, nor this. Because of that, I will give you an understanding heart, he said. And with it, I will give you riches, I will give you wealth, and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. Sacrifice is powerful. You can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time 
the beginning of that year the lord gave an instruction to carry everything literally everything 0, 0.00 carry everything and so and i heard it i knew it was god i said lord thank you for an opportunity for lifting not thank you for being a robber god does not rob as we carried that seed and sowed in seven days seven days god did a miracle that is only in heaven we all know what god did but is a is a mother of miracles to this ministry even financially greed is your partnership with failure when you are greedy you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle please hear what i'm saying this is true greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm you can pray your way you can give your way sow your way and then invoke the mercy of god and so on and so forth let me talk about two more and we'll pray oh dear but i hope you are getting these things because let me tell you if you understand these principles that i show you your life will become an unending wonder it's true it's not a lie they are not opinions hallelujah the next law spiritual law the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us destiny help us these are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships please understand this everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships we are relational beings in fact the faith work starts with a relationship a relationship with jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth relationships matter in this life please listen when you master relationships you will tame life like a dog i wish i had the time but let's look at just one scripture second samuel chapter 9 it's a long reading i don't know if we can look at it second samuel chapter 9 we'll start from verse 1 destiny help us there is there is a teaching and david said ah i answer amen for this for even myself and david said is there yet any that is left in the house of saul that i may show him kindness for whose sake not for his sake for jonah because you are related to jonathan i want to change your life next verse and there was in the house of one saul a servant whose name was ziba and they went and called unto david they called him unto david and the king said unto him art thou ziba and he said thy servant is here we're reading please go ahead and the king said is there not any in the house of saul that i may show him kindness and so on and so forth and ziba said unto the king jonathan had yet a son but this son is lame on his feet is a son but it's a son that cannot help himself next verse and the king said unto him where is he and he said behold he is in laudeba and so on and so forth verse 5 let's hurry up i just want us to get the, the central message and the and the king david sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, and the son of amiel from laudeba six now when mephibosheth the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David. He fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. 
And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the Spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yeah, none like you. What are you turning to say? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, my God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. No. Destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, please listen. I have given unto thy master's son, all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen Therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited. But in this kingdom, there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost 
And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching. Please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job, but he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check. But he knows how to connect to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two, the second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Halus Kaprando Kashubria. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers that they believe that just because God, let me tell you this sincerely, please hear me. Not every enemy is castable. Just think about what I'm saying. There are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God. You cannot cast them. When God wants you to pass through that gate, he will make them to show you favor. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are gatekeepers. A Cyrus can reject you. He does not honor God, but you are rejected. How do you cast Caesar? How do you cast Herod? So he granted favor. And when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus, they allowed it. Not every man you can just pray and say, let him leave that place. Let me tell you, there are men that would not go there. Because their stewardship is a covenant. They are not even there because of what they did. They are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect. Although they are unbelievers. Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel. Because he will always remember Abraham. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth. In a desert land yet they are prosperous. Because God is a covenant keeping God. So when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not living, find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God. Forget that they are rebelling while they are there. Their children will pay for it. But for that time, no, your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor. And you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results. What I tell you is called spiritual intelligence. It's true. These are the kinds that you need favor, influence. Did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph? He just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph. Notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh, they were allowed to serve their God. And Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest, Potiphera, the priest of On. 
as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by God you will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy You have a business because of scarcity you you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so so so, so person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, i'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing ceo and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted i pray this prayer all the time and I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people. The workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people. Has saved me the stress of any other thing. I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Please, you need gifted people in your life. Otherwise, life will be hard. You can't do everything by yourself. hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day your serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child lord send me gifted people in the name of jesus christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne. They love you because of who you are. The flat tree of success can kill. People can clap when there is a crown on your head. But when you are at the cross, you will need burden bearers. And Jesus was on his way to Golgotha, the Bible records. And he was, he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die. He would have died there. And if he died yet, there would be a problem because he needed to die a curse, not just to die a man. Curse is the man that hangs upon the tree, he says, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if he died on the way, that's not redemption. That's obituary. And then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene the black man the nigger and he the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you 
I pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like David in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says mighty men, they came to David. They saw him hiding and they said you will become our king. It's not everybody that is looking for results. There are people who will stay with you. As the landlord is driving you, they will stand there and say, no, I will not run away. Men are selfish by design. Please, every leader, hear me. You need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers. Men and women who can cry with you. They can say, Hosanna, but when you're on your way to the cross, you will only see Mary and John there. Burden bearers. There are men of God when they are, we start building project, everybody just runs away. When the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like Ruth to Naomi. Your God will be my God. And your people will be my people. Many people, when they are in their dark days, they never find helpers. Who will not celebrate with you when things are going well? But you must pray for burden bearers. There is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say, Pastor, I love you. I will stand by you all the way. Are we together? I'm robber still from your house. And someone comes and says, is there food? For the next two weeks, I will be cooking for you. Don't tell anybody. I have to stay here. I hear you want to buy back another car. Please, my salary of two months is yours. Don't say there are no people like that. There are real burden bearers. It takes prayer and spiritual understanding. Listen, these are the forces that work in the life of others. And while you are seeing these things happen, there are burden bearers. Again, I thank God for the privilege. You know, many men of God, for many men of God, their greatest fear, in fact, many successful people, their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad. I tell you, God has taken that fear out of my life. God has given me not only trusted people, not only gifted people, not everybody old, but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today, they will stand and take that bullet. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on the night. No need to cry cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen, listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching and Jesus spoke about a man and robbers were laid that man are we together and he was on the a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church a pharisee came and left him but there was a man called good samaritan no name good samaritan he was identified by where he was coming from his territory and his character good samaritan and the man sat down he bandaged this man took him to a private inn to keep him and said i will take care of him i'm about to go and do something when i come back whatever the cost is 
that's a burden bearer that's not an advisor there are people who will come and see your child your daughter your son and look at things work and say ah, what is this you mean he has been writing wired for five years i will conduct a personal tutorial when you see a burden bearer you will think they charm them they will carry your own load on their own head you are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer you have entered the sabbath the person may not be a millionaire he will be collecting hundred thousand and depositing sixty thousand say this is my contribution there are real burden bearers not everyone on earth is wicked you have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you you select your possibilities in prayer this ministry by the grace of God has been privileged to have burden bearers men and women who are raised by the spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but I've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if God did not call them themselves burden bearers it is painful to be alone it is painful to be alone there are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children they had just five or six of their own children but they raise up to 50 children of other people and these people in old age will be in the hospital are we together now looking for one million for a treatment and all those 40 people they raised not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it a burden bearer will go all out to turn your crying to weeping that's his assignment to insist till you laugh why are you about to go away so I'm in 200 level my father just died my mother just died they don't sit down and say I will from the same village that's not a burden bearer is your what was your father did he know my father I stand and I say this come every semester receive this school fees for give me your account number I will be putting 10 10 thousand until you graduate and when you are about to graduate let me know so that I will ensure that you have a job now you have a job you are doing well sir this is the wife I want to marry oh really do you have an auditorium we are trusting God because how much do you have hundred thousand take one million go and pay for an auditorium that's a burden bearer there are churches that have had the privilege of burden bearers that's why they don't announce we have a project of you know God designed men to be burden bearers this crying on stage for money every week no a real burden bearer will sit down and find needs why is this pastor's shoe removing that shoe would the pastor would never wear that shoe again had this shoe no no it was embarrassing next time you go and buy ah, we noticed that this child was crying and nobody could buy bobo next week there's a carton of bobo for children that's a burden bearer and may you be a burden bearer too because it it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another you have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer may your wife be your burden bearer husband and may your husband may, may, what's the next one now may your husband be a burden bearer wife be, because listen let me tell you if your spouse is not a burden bearer you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital you've seen these things happen 
Some persons are in the hospital. Some people are selling their property. Hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you would die. Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly. These are the things to think about. Father, is this person a burden bearer? Not for now, for the days that come. There are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man. He can't talk, he can't walk, yet she's laughing. They say, say something about your husband. Say, even if we return in this life, I want him to still be my husband. That's a burden bearer. My generation, hear me. Open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life. Burden bearers. In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world and you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, look, this and that and that and burden bearers. The Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Ah. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, it will go home after the grace. <laughs> make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Ma. This spiritual mystery, second only to the law of encounter, is the greatest truth I have found. The law of honor. The mystery behind the sudden rising of people. Like a charm, a man just evaporates and you don't see him again. And the only place you find him is above. Honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please listen. Five minutes and we're done. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And then if need be, honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness. The discerning, the celebrating, and the rewarding of a man. Please help him. Out. 
for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching that i did at the king's court rccg the king's court listen to it i spoke on the book of esther the book of esther starts in a very interesting way please lend me five minutes we're still at that the bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man a king called ahasuerus the bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his his might and then the bible tells us about a woman called vashti are we together so the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman the king calls for vashti to come to come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused the king being a very good man he kept quiet with the issue but then the advisors of the king said uh, 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 uh. this woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman if you permit this dishonor our wives and our women will start the same thing too do something about it and vashti is banished are we together that means everything was in place in a palace the throne is still there the treasures are still there but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two everything still in place intelligence is there the security there her man is there but one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces and then the king dismisses the wife there is no record of Vashti saying sorry there is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king I apologize no to hell with your palace and she leaves scene three a call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory and then in a place called Shushan are we together now the little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king honor she honored the man and she came honor and favor works peri pasu there may not be time to talk about favor but if you if you if you practice honor automatically you will find favor favor is the reward for honor are we together so when she came there the bible says in esther chapter 2 please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17 that there was a grace for favor that was upon her now when the turn of esther came and so on and so forth she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her favor is a grace that works with sight when the, when the grace for favor is upon you only a blind man will ignore blessing you provided there is a man that has the eye that can see they are compelled to bless you verse 17 and the king loved esther above all the women she was not alone but the king loved esther and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so other virgins obtained favor too but her surpassed them so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Are we together? And then when you read on, you will find out that a lot began to happen. And she declared a fast because of the threat of her man, his plot to destroy the people of God. And she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer the scepter and invited and said what should i do a wise woman look at honor honor is a weapon in that in the book of esther there is no priest in the book of esther there is no prophet in the book of esther there is no apostle 
in the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. A wise, a foolish woman would have told the king and said, King, her man wants to destroy us. Will you watch your beautiful bride go? See that? But a wise woman, when he gave her an opportunity, her honor, she discerned his mood and she said, Oh, king, I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you. It was her not honoring you that took her out of the place. Grant me the opportunity to present a banquet. And the king said, Finally, I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't before your don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily it's a formula the king's interest first before your needs so esther prepares a banquet and then notice she also requested please let her man also come when you fight a great man's friend too soon even if it's your enemy you will pay for it friendship is not built in one day you will not fight it emotionally her man had done many good things for the king for one woman's plea to make him destroy the man no she prepared the banquet the king liked it he said do it again he said with all pleasure my king honor remember somebody is dying no but honor is the one killing the person and then another banquet is prepared and then the bible says she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes there is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people who is that that her man Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah, you are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. He, he's just doom. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. Her man, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Please hear me honor is powerful this honor is dangerous there is only one reason why men fail in life carry this message dishonor to God dishonor to men dishonor to principles one more time dishonor to God dishonor to men 
and dishonor to principles this is why people fail in life every time I have the privilege of going to any church or ministry to minister I will never never dishonor the man of God dishonor their protocol dishonor their system I will walk within what is provided it's called honor it's not weakness honor your father and your mother that your days may be long I tell you why many young people are dying like chickens dishonor 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 the law of honor has changed my life the law of honor has lifted me lifted this great ministry you can any living practicing honor honor is a stream of income when they say mention your streams of income don't just mention real estate and shop and poultry say honor a wise man will clap for you honor is powerful it can change your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters honor is powerful I continue to walk this law like a chess and you walk this law there is no power in existence I don't just use the precious workers in this ministry I truly love them and I honor them we prepare a bus to carry you after service as a way a token of honor honor is very powerful let me tell you this when God makes men like you no matter what is done a, within the context of that generation you have entered your sabbath it is not enough for god to like you alone the men he uses must like you god can tell pastor femi come pastor femi i'm rounding up god can tell pastor femi to bless me he can reject that instruction while he's struggling with obedience i'm suffering i will be seen in the vision that my testimony has landed but it will remain in the dream God agreed, a man disagreed and paying the price. And the key will be honor. Honor. Is what we continue to teach in this ministry. Please hear me. You are part of this spiritual family. One of the signature traits of your life must be honor. Don't talk to people anyhow. You see elderly people, you insult everybody. Huh? No. An elderly woman is carrying something marked. Please, can I help you? Oh, I'm a man of God. So what? Demonstrate the fact that you are called by your intelligence. Don't dishonor our children. You see my children here. Even if I'm not going to see anybody on the line, I must see these children. Nobody fights these small children and have me laugh at them. No. I will hug and they should jump on me and rumple me with their cloth. No problem. If we don't honor them, our future is dead. Honor is powerful. You see a wealthy man and he said, these people are just lucky. All these people. How can a young man, if not, uh, I hear your father was this and that. You see, dishonor is why many people are poor and broke. They see every rich man and just think he was dash, he was luck. No. Every successful man, especially a successful young man. You know, one time, we were traveling somewhere and I sat close to someone and I was sleeping. It was so bad. You know this kind of sleep? You are going like this all around because you are tired. And then, you know, the person was trying to, ah, you're a young man. What kind of sleep is this? I just looked at him and I nodded my head. I said, you see, this is the kind of thing you are talking about. You are not asking why I'm seated where you are seated at my age. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I don't mean to be sarcastic. The first question is, how did you get here? Listen, please don't dishonor anybody. You have a job. And someone does not have a job. The person who does not have a job, you can honor your way. I've taught it commanding results. Listen to it. 
one day get up in the morning and polish the shoe of the one who has gotten a job don't say it's my younger brother it's my younger sister it's my when i was in in, in ss uh, um, ss3 he was all those all those superstitious trado african approach to life you, you you will be punished again and again i have a great deal of respect for people who honor me sincerely if you if you if you trivialize what I represent, I will not fight you, but I will never prophesy to you. You will not be, you will not be close. You will not be around my life again because I'm going to waste my time. I don't love, I don't hate you. I will not do that. I will never dishonor or despise any man called young or old. No, I honor all men. Beware of people who have mastered the art of trivializing what you represent. They may be sincere, but they are dangerous to your growth. Not to flatter you. But please, if you have 127 provinces, it is not a bad thing to have a feast. O oh, Ahasuerus. 127 provinces is not a kiosk. Let us learn to practice honor. Some of you need to go back and appreciate your parents. Your father is a prof. Your mother is a prof. You are there sweeping the ground in life. You can say, Daddy, Mommy, please. Whatever I have done, whatever needs to come on my head how much is chicken that you cannot buy and prepare i'm telling you this there are parents who never went to school but they raised 10 children not one of them is an arm robber you think it's just there is a grace there one child is about to kill you go and meet them buy something they like and say please place something on my destiny when I was about to start ministry, I met my father and my mother. And I told them, I said, I told my mother, I said, you are a pastor's daughter. Your father was a pioneer. My grandfather was the first cooking president. The first cooking president. And is that pioneer grace I want? I knelt down. When you are too big to honor, you are too big to receive adaptation is proof of honor great people are very difficult people don't want people to lift you at your terms that is pride when you want someone to lift you adaptation is proof of honor there are fathers of faith today that want to invite me and you know sometimes our precious fathers respectfully speaking they also don't know the schedule but I've helped the protocol to see just be open be open I will see how I will adjust anything not that you stand and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman and crash down honor is powerful you are the one who loses when you dishonor men we have to stop here teach your children to honor don't see a stranger and come and slap him you spank the child and, and, and prophesy to the child and say, I did not give birth to this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must change. You must become like your father. Pamper your child to have something, some, produce something that would destroy you. There are people about to start ministry and will meet everybody like a colleague. They are failing they don't they don't have the influence and the credibility and they will not listen they come to everybody ah, i'm just one of those i hear you are the femi abi the, the femi a pastor femi sorry you see already even if he prays for you i assure you even if you fall down you didn't get anything yes falling down has never been the requirement for reception it is honor the door you dishonor closes towards you I never find a man that carries something I need and I will keep quiet with it now one day God will give you an opportunity to see how I honor the fathers you will be surprised it's just that honor at that level always happens in the secret I had the privilege to pray two weeks ago at Papa Ia Deboe's prayer room I was granted the opportunity and the tour and I said please grant me the grace I say, what is there? Every prayer room, what is it? Is it a shrine? You, you see this kind of thinking. You, every result has mysteries that support it. 
when I laid down, I prayed. One of the things I told God is, Lord, I honor this our servant. You have made him a voice. A few years ago, he went to David Yongicho for prayers for that church growth grace. A few years later, Yongicho called him to come and pray for him. I made sure that I treated every staff there. The staff were the apostle, you are the apostle, pray for me. I said, no, I know that I will pray for you, but I came here to carry a grace. Oh no. The person seated next to you is carrying a grace that you may not, you may need but don't have. Are we together? The gentleman may not have money, but he has character. He's a grace and he's transferable. The person seated next to you, no matter what happens, there is a covenant of supplies. Quarter to shame, help must rise from somewhere. You think it's not an issue to honor? Some of our mothers and fathers seated here, the kind of graces and covenants that operate on their lives. They can just look at you and say, bless you and that's it. And many of our proud generation of young people who do not understand honor is why we continue to pay for it. We never rise, we never shine, and our light never comes. Please rise up on your feet. I apologize for taking our time. Hold hands with someone. I'm going to pray. These are the ways of the kingdom. This is the place of encounter I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions this is the place of surrender to, to me what you want this is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny it says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain how beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face,
but to reveal his power to let men know that he's still alive to correct misunderstandings about God please listen to me I want to charge your faith before we pray I believe that challenges can end I believe that problems can end did you hear what I said I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God I believe it I believe it I believe prosperity is real I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian I believe in the blessing of the Lord I believe in what it can do to your family I believe in what it can do to your children I believe in what it can do to your health I know poverty causes sickness I know it causes worry nobody will preach into embracing nonsense no I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers I believe in speed I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month I truly believe it I truly believe it I believe God can restore time when a woman has been barren for seven years if she gives birth to one baby we thank God but it's not a statement enough when she gives birth to triplets God took nine years of space in three three years and compressed it in one year now that's victory over time the hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God please listen let me tell you we are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus wealth is a weapon the anointing is a weapon favor is a weapon mercy is a weapon wisdom is a weapon what are you fighting with desire you will not win it takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially spiritually I believe it listen out of everything I'm saying throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort when your children's school fees are paid you will serve God better don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter yes I know that none of these things should affect our love for God but let me tell you the truth there is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God it takes time to know God it takes time to serve God and that's the time the devil does not want to give you you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money you will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to live to be lifted vain is the help of man people of God please hear me God did not gather us tonight to waste our time he gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week your entire resources when you are finally broke then the person will die is that sickness
Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with you and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you being evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight, I need your hands too. In addition to your heart, step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen. When we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. You just concluded that God this one just just leave this issue no when it was time to resurrect Lazarus he said roll away the stone roll away the stone prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed Your destiny must open up tonight. Yeah. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things. To prove your calling and election. To make it sure. There are things that must be in your life. To validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace. For God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say let's pray no that's what the scribes did all the time but Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy and he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes they thought they would share the grace he closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand he said stretch your hands these things I write to you O excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute. 
and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Elam shalawa kasala kaparatus, embra kato seke de kaparianda kapaliasha. Pray, pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, oh God. Pray, do to me, oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tears. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anoint, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I will stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It is said, I must walk the works of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. He says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we we'll just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life. That will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works let me just tell you the anointing works you will see people begin to run it's it's not anything superstitious it is just the character and the operation of that anointing we need it the Lord put it in my heart we need it for our businesses 
ministries and so on and so forth father in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now inside and outside i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i declare right now at the count of three let this grace for speed that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now i release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere i activate the operation of this grace i shift your life in the name of jesus to strange dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for receive that grace for speed in the name of jesus and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab to Israel. i command speed 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 bring them out speed Keleba, help that woman please my god I'm still praying in the name of Jesus. It says, Ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what I prophesy again. Like 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 fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. New level speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any family stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside. I release speed right now. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving, but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare. Is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty i want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let god give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed 
among the, the I, I meant uh, among the the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. My God. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names, I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus, everywhere here overflow one, two, three outside. As you shout that name that is above all names, I decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of God in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now release destiny release destiny every ordinance that is not the planting of God let it go now let it go now I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit let it go now I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort day that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right 
and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your role listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your role if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we we'll begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of Jesus Sheketere Kota Karus Kabadi Shkelebrandi Kata Empra Katus Kalabros Keto Pres Kete Pareta Madam be free I take it out of your life now the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now I release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of Jesus be free now I'm seeing fire rising from this road just from I don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. 
everything that must leave anyone I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah please all of you here just lift your hands right now I stretch my hands now something is coming on people right here be free now 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 Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now be free be free be free be free i take it out of you right now the fire of the holy spirit right here where i'm standing right here where i'm standing the lord is taking something out of your life be free i'm standing here and the lord is saying it is over he's speaking to someone it is over an anointing is coming on you now it is over 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 Shalakata. over madam be free now the power of god is touching someone here in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus be free be free be free be free, be free. Be free. please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of jesus I declare and declare be free. be free, be free, be free. Every devil of darkness, be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that is held, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I'm seeing a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me overflow too. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Sela kaparato siketa. Kela ende braska lakatosh every reproach go now go now i release your destiny all of you standing here i'm passing now the power of god is coming on you be free praise the lord okay um i'm going to walk around i may not go row by row please let your heart be open please except god is not god whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you. At the count of three, overflow three. Let me hear you shout the name Jesus. 
the moment you shout that name i'm seeing like i'm seeing like fire coming out of people this is something living people are you ready now one two three be free now be free now be free now be free now from the front to the now in the name of Jesus I release your destiny now I release your destiny now madam look at me I set her free now release her destiny right now that woman you are holding in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Listen, I declare to you, I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down, overflow three. From the front to the back, may the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you're an usher or not, whether you're an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of it. And that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands this is not a healing miracle this is the anointing to heal right now from the front to the back upon gentlemen and upon ladies receive that grace receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now please everyone overflow one two three main auditorium Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues. And sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow 3. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow 3. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three, you can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for, we believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil if you want to do a thorough walk. You are not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours, but we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers, or you'll find a few people who will lift up their hands or lift up baskets, and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly. Just like I've designated, please, quickly, you come, stand here by faith. Overflow one, in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here I hope I'm doing the right thing and then overflow two B and two C let me call it now two B extending to second equa and two C extending to the gate of the third overflow all of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please. Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belonging is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch and then you be back to your seat and check yourself. Whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting, whatever the situation is, whilst they touch and they minister, just expect a miracle. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Within the time we have, we pray that your healing power will flow. Let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray let incurable situations live and i pray god that you give your people testimonies in the name of jesus christ in Nigeria.
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your... You, see, you cannot... I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had... Is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. 
let her be healed now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus mama don't cry cancer I speak to you you have a name you have a voice release this lady now in the name of Jesus my friend look at me you came all the way from Thailand in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God this fractured leg I fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh look at me go run Don't mind them just focus on me if you're having pain we're not acting here huh? so if you're having any a miracle has happened to you when I held your leg I felt the power of God moving through you you see this thing you see is a very demonic thing it's not about fracture do you understand number one come my friend you're together too I want to pray for you you see God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere huh? just because you are footballers doesn't mean that you ignore God many footballers don't love Jesus they love football and they love the money that comes with it but we're not only here God has perfected this let me pray on the x-ray please father in the name of Jesus let this miracle remain forever Amen. I want to pray for both of you I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you but listen to me I'm sure I don't know you I've never seen you can I prophesy on your career in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you thank you so much for your patience we're about to pray on the requests I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I truly believe that as we pray on these requests that every situation that has defied God it must answer to the name of the Lord let her go now I curse you by the God of heaven out now Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately pray passionately that Lord this that I'm bringing before you this will be the last I truly believe make sure we collect for those outside 
if you are still being ministered to no problem you can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of god is coming on two of them the moment that happens then i have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes god does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that god gave me now i'm ready to pray in the name of jesus believe with me i stand upon this request now and i declare by the power of the holy spirit every request laid before god here i decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of jesus christ hear me the bible says these egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore i declare that everything that defied the name of the lord represented here i declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today I have seen them they are strong they are fine the Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except God instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of jesus
there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered i declare mercy upon this request in the name of jesus christ father i stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ may it please the lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because i have seen the creative power of the word of god i've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing god cannot do i'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ. A gentleman here, one of the years, checked his name on admission list 
and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus that is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page 
of the Bible is an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Herein is our Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience. I declare rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me encourage you, listen. Make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that God gives you. And be sure to make it a duty to testify. Let it not be a burden. To, you are not, testimonies don't just endorse that a man of God is anointed. Testimonies are proof to men, to creation, to all and sundry that God is love and that he is still mighty. Testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others. It's important to not withhold testimony. Someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith. So be sure that as God touches you, you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far, but we're on various social media platforms. You can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God. Praise the Lord. Still standing, everyone, our time is gone. I want to make an altar call. I believe in salvation. Listen, it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world, it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter Jesus. Let's settle down. Please let me have your attention. Lend me your attention for a minute or two. You are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious Wherever you are and whatever category you belong to, our time is gone. Just one minute for this. Aside from overflow three, because of time, I will request overflow one, overflow two, wherever you are making this altar call and those in, quickly leave your seat very boldly. And I'd like for you to come and stand right here. Let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to Jesus. I don't expect you to still be thinking about it. The Holy Spirit should already be confirmed. Hello. You do not wait for any scriptures exhort us be the first. from the book of Proverbs. 
Let me for time's sake son. count one to five. I one. to my Quickly, sins. please, if you're coming, Incline hurry up. ears to my Win words. that war. Do not Let say them we not came depart in from thy eyes and, I do not and want keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe the life of God that is you not are going to reap the blessings thereof that is what if you attend Koinonia, to these words as well. Them. That keep you coming. will keep these come words in the midst Young of your heart. That no Bible matter says, the circumstance, all who your eyes him, he will are going to be no fixed on this word. And as you have been blessed, I don't we will tell you to share this message. Be quickly. an evangelist by sharing to others to and be blessed Lord, and then subscribe to this channel to for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going Hallelujah. to set you Praise on course and don't forget to like make sure for that us. overflow three thank you as, uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you are not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you are handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come from altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the 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 prayer you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together Okay. Lord Jesus I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones precious as they are we receive them into the fold the family of faith and I declare their sins forgiven and I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today, the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you that you 